Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon, even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Gordon Schmidt about exploring effective leadership through popular culture and leadership lessons from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Gordon Schmidt, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Great to be here, John. Yeah, it is a pleasure to be with you today. I'm super excited to have a fun conversation. And I always say we're going to have a fun conversation, but today I really mean fun. We're going to be talking about the MCU and we're going to be exploring the topic of your new book, Leaders Assembled, Leadership in the MCU, which is part of Emerald Publishing's Exploring Effective Leadership Through Popular Culture series. And I just think that's so fun. I often say, I, I'm also a university professor. I'll share your bio here in a moment. But I also often share with colleagues, like I would love to teach an OB course or a leadership course that was just completely based off of compelling movies. Uh, like a, a movie-based leadership oh, yeah. course, pop culture. I, I think that sounds amazing and would be so much fun. I've never done it. And so I'm a little envious of of the work that you're doing and <laughs> really the the genius behind this book. So it'll be a lot of fun to to explore together. As we get started, I wanted to share Gordon's bio with everybody. Gordon Schmidt is an associate professor of organizational leadership at Purdue University, Fort Wayne. He researches leadership and the future of work. He edited a book on how social media is used in selection and recruitment and has an upcoming book on teaching leadership through Marvel superhero films, as I just mentioned. He is currently writing a book teaching leadership concepts through Avatar, The Last Airbender. Dr. Schmidt has researched the gig economy and virtual leadership. He researches leadership in lean production and corporate social responsibility as well. And he consults with organizations on these topics. He teaches courses in leadership and human resources. And what a pleasure. We have a lot of overlap in our backgrounds and areas of interest in teaching and in research. And I will say too, I also visited the Purdue University Fort Wayne campus, oh, maybe five years ago, a, a, a beautiful campus, a beautiful city. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a pleasure to be with you. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Um, yeah. Oh, I, I will mention uh, my PhD is in organizational psychology. Um, and Sai, my co-author, Sai Islam, his background is IO psychology as well. And he teaches that. Um, so we definitely bring that perspective as well um, to all of our work too. Yeah, thank you. And that's where we diverge slightly, though. We're close cousins. My uh, PhD is in organizational sociology uh, instead of IO psych. Uh, but we both teach oh, leadership, yeah. OB, and, uh, and HR-related courses and do research. Much, much of my research uh, area focus is, is uh, consistent with yours. Oh, the other thing I was just going to say, Avatar The Last Airbender, that is going to be a fun book. Um, my children love anime and they love Avatar and many of the other really classic uh, series. And so that, yeah, that's a fascinating one as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're really excited about that one. And people we've talked to of a certain age um, to, to them, Avatar, the last airbender is like the most exciting thing <laughs> in the, in the world. It's really fascinating. Um, you know, both Cy and I are a little too old for that to be when we were a kid. Um, but for the people that grew up with that, it really is a very such a seminal show. And it's 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 great on leadership. There's so many each episode has something that's relevant to leadership in it, really. And so 
we're really excited to to be writing that book up right now moving on to that one next so size on that book as well so we're yeah psyched. that's that's super fun and you know i'm not sure i'll ever get my kids to read any of my leadership books but i bet i can convince them to read the leadership book about the last airbender <laughs> <laughs> sounds good <laughs> well very good uh, so actually, we're not talking about that book today, though. We're we're talking about leadership in the MCU. Uh, and, you know, I don't even know how many movies we're up to in the MCU universe, 20 something, right? We, there's so many movies. Yeah. And, uh, and th- they're fun. And I, I've watched them with my children. And, and we, we, we always look forward to the next one out. Uh, given my background, I also tend to focus in on you know, the leadership characteristics and traits and how things play out and the interpersonal dynamics and all those sorts of things. Um, what really spurred you on, you and your co-author, to write this book now uh, to, to explore leadership in the MCU? Yeah, so I think there's a few different kind of threads that, that came together. Um, I think kind of the basic thread to start with Sai and I is that we both talk a lot about outreach related to our field and related to leadership and the concepts, uh, you know, kind of empirically based leadership, right? Um, and so we, we've written about that topic. We do a lot on social media to try to get these ideas out there. Um, and so outreach is always an interest to us of this research because so much great research gets done. And then it gets published in a journal that's behind a paywall. You know, it's written in the most confusing way possible because, you know, three different reviewers want it a different way and they want you to do this. And so it's anyone outside of our field. And frankly, with some of the papers, not even anyone in our field can understand what the heck (laughs) these people are talking about if they find it exists. Right. Um, And so Sai and I really think it's very important to get those ideas out there. Um, And so pop culture is something we've both used in our classroom. We've talked about topics related to various movies. Um, And so we saw this call for book proposals for this exploring leadership through pop, you know, popular culture. And we're like, that sounds perfect for us. Um, We're both really big Marvel fans, both in terms of the comics. We grew up with those comics. Um, and the movies, we love the movies. And so we're like, hey, this would be a great idea. We already talk about the Marvel some in our classes when we can. You know, we've shown clips and that type of thing. This would be a great way to do some of that outreach of these leadership ideas, especially because leadership as presented in the popular area can be very inaccurate. It can be, you know, just leadership quotes that, you know, aren't based on anything. And so to be able to come up with a very accessible type of book. And I think that's something we both try to do when we're writing is make this something people can understand. Um, I've read a lot of papers that seem brilliant, but you feel like you understand 10% of what they're talking about, right? And so for us to make things accessible. Uh, and so, you and, know, and talk- can I, can I just yeah. add, so you just mentioned, you know, sometimes you read a paper and you're like, oh, maybe I only understood 10%, a quarter of it or whatever. And that's for people who are academically trained specifically yeah. in the field. <laughs> and so you talk about just any random, you know, leader in an organization who's just like grappling for anything to try to help them figure out how to better lead their teams and be more effective. And the chances of them even knowing your paper exists or if they do know, to be able to have access to it. And if they have access to it, to actually be able to read it and understand it. I mean, it's almost zero, right? And so we have to find better ways to disseminate. Yeah, yeah. So that's what kind of led to the impetus for the book um, overall. And so, you know, thinking about, okay, these movies and how can they help us to learn these important leadership concepts in kind of engaging an interesting way in a way that people understand. So I think that's one of the things with like big famous CEOs and stuff is that you know who those people are. So if you mention Steve Jobs did this, you're like, oh yeah, he was successful. So therefore this must work. Now, of course, spoilers, a lot of time that's not true <laughs> and it might not be good advice, but we know who th- we know those, th- those characters, those famous CEOs, those historical leaders, um, kind of like we know the Marvel superheroes. So if we say Captain America, shows servant leadership characteristics and that's why he's a good leader it's somebody you say oh i know captain america i could apply some of these areas so sure you're not going to lead the avengers but you could apply some of those things we saw in the movie Uh, and our book does both show good leadership examples and examples where the heroes have 
you know, not done a good job or failed. And that can be even harder as going to a CEO, well, you screwed up, fix it, versus look at how Captain America screwed up. Oh, that's the lesson for me, right? And so I think that's one of the nice things with the pop culture is it's a lot easier to talk about a character and their failings and their strengths than to necessarily talk about, you know, the failings and strengths of your leader or even yourself as a leader in the same way. Um, and so that's, a, that's one thing that I think is really helpful. And it gives you another level as well as something you understand and is really engaged. And this pop culture is supposed to be fun. And so therefore it's already interesting. Well, as we said, the research articles, some of them, they ain't that interesting <laughs> and they're pretty hard to understand. You know, even when we geek out about some of this research, it can be so hard to <laughs> understand exactly what someone's getting at or, or what it, you know, being able to a- apply it um, can be difficult. Yeah, that application piece, I think, is really the, the hard piece to, to where the rubber meets the road, where it's actually going to matter is so, so important. And that's often what's missing, right? Uh, yeah. And even even in a good academic paper where they draw, you know, uh, conclusions and recommendations and implications for, you know, for practice, still, you know, that that still doesn't usually get to the end of the row. And, and so we have to find better ways to do it. And yeah, pop culture is a fantastic way to do it. It's a safe way to do it, right? Because yeah. sometimes we're scared to look at ourselves. Sometimes we're, you know, I, I think people tend to naturally look at leaders in their organizations. And sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll see the good things, but they'll also grumble about the bad things, but they don't feel safe talking about it. Right. But if yeah. you're talking about a character like a Steve Jobs uh, or an Elon Musk, who's kind of otherworldly, extraordinary, right. Not directly connected with us. It's easier to talk about when you talk about someone who is in a cinematic universe, that's very safe to talk about. You can completely open up and just share what you like, what you didn't like and why, and have a really great conversation. So it's a great way to connect with younger uh, individuals, but really anyone who, who understands and can resonate with, you know, the characters that you're talking about. So you've already given one example. You, you talked about Captain America and servant leadership. I think that's a, a great example. What are some of the other uh, examples that you pull out in your book from various characters about either the good, the bad, the ugly of leadership? Yeah, I'll go on to, you know, one of the bad. And I think that's the movie Captain America Civil War. You kind of see this conflict in the Avengers of how the Avengers should be run, who should be in charge, Right. Um, and what you see is Tony Stark says, uh, the UN should be making all the calls. You know, some of our actions have led to bad things. We really need somebody outside making the calls, sort of abdicating the, the responsibility, right? Somebody else should make the call. And I'm Tony Stark. I finance the team. That's what we should do, right? Very much saying, uh, you know, it's my money. You know, I'm going to take my ball and, <laughs> and leave with it. Uh, Captain America, meanwhile, is like, no, I don't necessarily trust, you know, this, this other group to be in charge. It's about my own morals. And so we should not have that oversight or that control. We should make the call on this team, right? And I think both sides have reasonable points on this, right? Captain America doesn't necessarily want, you know, maybe corrupt government elements to make them do things that are bad, or they don't want to just become, you know, just a government outshoot, maybe, right? Uh, and Iron Man has some points here of if you just have super powered people do whatever they want without any accountability to anybody else, bad things can happen. Uh, getting some of that input might be helpful. And maybe, I don't think he mentions it, but the support of these other groups, right? We don't need that Avengers team to make all the choices on everything, do all the logistics. A logistic team helping with that probably would be good. The problem is, neither of them is willing to compromise in any way on this. They're both like, we're just got to do my mine. We're not going to compromise. And it leads to sort of this whole Avengers breaking up. They come to actual physical blows when there probably is some type of compromise that could have been reached, right? Is that maybe the UN could have done some oversight. Maybe individual members could have made choices on which missions they take. Um, but we didn't need this level of the Avengers are broken up, right? And I think that's a good example of sometimes how we see vision and leaders sometimes uh, in an inaccurate or unhelpful way, right? We think of those CEOs that do make all the decisions and are the most important people. 
And I think that's what we see with Steve Jobs and Elon Musk, right? Is we act like the whole reason for the success of these companies is these dudes. It almost seems like they're the, you know, Elon Musk is the one who builds every car that comes off the assembly line, right? He invented the idea, which he didn't. He's a financer that came in and kicked out the original creators of, of the idea, right? He's great at marketing the stuff and making a persona, but there's a whole bunch of other smart people there doing important things that are leaders as well as production. And Apple, Steve Jobs is not the best pro, was not the best programmer in the world. There was a lot of bright people doing very important things. Um, but again, we can act like that one person with their vision shouldn't be changed, shouldn't be modified. We just got to follow that person uh, and that's it. And so I think that Civil War gives a great example of that issue of not compromising as a leader, just not trying to get other people's feedback. Um, and a lot of the team doesn't bring up, you know, the rest of the team could have brought up more information, help them to get to this compromise, but they do a lot more of, well, which side am I on versus how can we come up with a good solution? So that's, that was yeah. a fun you're right. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Academy. Courses, micro-credentials, and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. All HCI Academy courses, micro-credentials, and certificates are designed, developed, and delivered by award-winning and internationally renowned scholars, educators, thought leaders, executives, and practitioners. Our courses, micro-credentials, and certificates will help you make your mark on the future of work and make an immediate impact in your organizations. Check out the HCI Academy and our many course offerings and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us. The reality is uh, within, within the context of that movie, they're on the same team, right? They want the same yeah. things. They want yeah. to protect the world. Uh, they just have a different vision for how to carry that out. Uh, yeah. And as you said, on the one hand, you could say, well, well, Captain America is just, you know, passionate in, in trying to hold true to his morals, his values, yeah. right? But we could make moral, ethical arguments for Tony Stark's approach, right? And, and mm -hmm. so in a sense, both are taking the ball and going home. Um, because they're yeah. unwilling to compromise. And that's the tricky thing is when people feel strongly about something and when they feel it's, it's grounded in their integrity and their personal morals and values, yeah. man, that, that can become a very difficult situation to try to navigate um, because it, it, it comes down to their identity and, and the core of who they are and how they see themselves in, in reaction to the world around them. And yeah, with the rest of the team, you don't really see that same struggle in that movie um they're they're just kind of it's it becomes an us versus them picking sides rather than trying to figure out how we can uh compromise how we can create buy-in for our shared vision um yeah. and, and instead of more of an authoritarian kind of just this is the way it's going to be kind of an approach yeah yeah and i wonder about that a little bit with leadership development in the avengers right because other people don't step up and say, hey, I've got this information. And you've got a lot of very talented people. You've got people that are, you know, geniuses on their, on their own, like the Hulk, right? You've got these people that really could have good input or could, you know, look at this, not just from one perspective versus the other, but we don't really see a good job of that happening in the film. And I think that's somewhat of a failure of potentially their, their team dynamics there. You know, they might be able to work really well in a fight, but this important issue of governance really doesn't get nearly the attention and people involved. And that's something I think also is useful is even somebody like Captain America, we might think of as a great leader and a great person. He still makes mistakes and does something wrong. So if you do something wrong, it doesn't mean you're bad or a bad leader. 
but it is bad when you don't learn from it <laughs> and try to get better, right? We all make mistakes. That's the real world. And that, again, is something that happens with those great CEOs, right? Steve Jobs was always right every single time. We just should listen to him. And that's not what I would say a review of Apple's history suggests. When they needed to monetize and come up with good products, he was sticking to old things. Him getting fired was the right thing to do at that point. And him being brought back was the right thing when that happened. But it wasn't that he should have been in charge for all of time because he was perfect at it. He made huge mistakes. He had huge biases and errors, but he also had a good skill set that was helpful, but that doesn't mean he was perfect at any time, right? And I think that's one thing sometimes we get into those really heroic leaders that we think are always right. That's that's not true. No, Nobody's perfect. And it's not helpful to think of our leaders as such either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, any other great examples from the MCU universe that you would like to point out that you discuss in your book about leadership? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing I think is really interesting is looking at Tony Stark, Iron Man's path through the movies. Um, and we talk about this actually related to authenticity, self-awareness, and authentic leadership. Um, and I think Tony Stark is a great example of how leaders are not perfect, <laughs> right? That leaders have pros and cons. And we sometimes you know, think of just those selfless leaders and things like servant leadership can sometimes lead into those stereotypes, right? You've got the leader as sort of a saint that just does everything right and self-sacrificing entirely. Uh, Tony Stark is a jerk. <laughs> He's very arrogant. He's very full of himself, but he is a very good leader. He cares about his team. He's, you know, multiple times uh, sacrifices himself uh, within the movies. Um, and he has, he can influence other people significantly in what he does. And so we talk about in that chapter sort of Tony getting at who he really is, because he starts in the Iron Man movies sort of as, you know, this weapons maker that's pretty shallow and, you know, seems to not really care about the world. But he's also miserable <laughs> as that. He's not happy about it, right? But he doesn't really know what's wrong in the whole uh, getting kidnapped and, you know, ha ultimately having to getting his heart condition issues lead him to realize kind of that he isn't really living the life he wants. Uh, he wants to have an impact. He wants to be, he wants to help the world. And that leads him to change his company. It leads him to become kind of a superhero, but he still struggles with what is the real Tony Stark? Because a lot of people in, in the universe act like the right thing to do is maybe for Tony to be the financer or on the side and not be a superhero. Well, that doesn't really fit with who he is. <laughs> he wants to be about there leading the charge, being that superhero, getting put in danger. And he needs to be kind of a smart ass, right? That's just who he is. And so when he tries to dial that stuff back, he often has problems because he's not really being himself. And so I think we see over the movies, his growth as a leader and as a successful person, because he becomes more authentic to himself. Yes, he might be a jerk at times. Yes, he's arrogant, but he cares so much about the people around him. He wants good for the world. He needs to use that energy in a way that's helpful, that allows him to succeed. And, and I think it's really cool to watch that arc over the movies, because it's not at the end that Tony Stark is a saint. He's still a jerk. He's just a successful leader <laughs> and he has positive impact on the world. And so our own quirks and our own aspects, we can't just try to repress them. We need to be ourselves. And I think that that's a strong message. And, and the people in the Marvel universe are not perfect, just like people are not perfect in the real world. <laughs> yeah. And, and something you just said that I think is really important to, to consider is impact, right? The impact of our leadership. Yeah. What are we actually accomplishing through our characteristics, our style, our approach? Most people don't expect us to be perfect. We, but we, so we need to get past that. We need to move yeah. away from that kind of uh, idol of perfection in, in leadership and just recognize and lean into what is needed for success, for successful outcomes, for impact in whatever arena we happen to be in right now in our role. And that will require different approaches and it will require different personalities and different skill sets. People, you know, we need to round out our team so that we can have enough uh, variety of competencies and capabilities to accomplish what needs to be done. And if not, 
we can get fall into the trap very easily of feeling really self-righteous about whatever, you know, our moral code is and that we're having, we're leading with integrity um, and we're self-sacrificing and we, we can, we can fall on that sword all day long and not actually impact anything and not have the outcomes that we're striving for. And the reality is sometimes you're going to have an arrogant jerk who, you know, is an arrogant jerk, but they get things done and they have an impact uh, that is going to help a lot of people. And so that's something that we also just have to wrestle with and acknowledge as yeah. we strive, you know, as we apply these principles and then go into our own organizations uh, to try to lead our teams in our organization and try to have the impact that we want to have. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things I think that can be difficult is figuring out the things that do really matter. So there's some ethical elements that do really matter. But the fact that we might disagree a little bit often isn't, it isn't that big of an ethical issue on many things. Um, right. There's a lot of things we can disagree on where people just have different opinions of what should be done or different preferences. Right. And I think that that's something to consider when we talk about leadership generally is that it's not there's only one path in many cases or just one ethical choice. There's multiple things that can be done. What works best for us? What's going to help us move forward? And even things like conflict. Conflict can be good. Uh, in teams because it brings out different perspectives that lead us to come up with the best solution. Uh, And so it's not just we should give in to somebody every time because, you know, that means we're good friends. No, we should potentially fight sometimes, especially when we're talking about tasks and what's the best way forward. You know, if we're insulting each other, which I think we get to (laughs) with Tony and, um, uh, and you know, Steve Rogers in the movies, that's when it gets bad. And so that's one of the things I think leadership can, is, is more complicated on some degree. We'd like to say, just be a transformational leader, just be a servant leader, but it's not as easy as put on that hat <laughs> and then all the decisions are made. There's still a lot to figure out and there's a lot of different ways we could go, many of which could be successful. Yeah. Yeah. Well said, Gordon. Well, this has just been a fascinating conversation. We've only scratched the surface of, I'm sure, the depth of what's in your book. Uh, Before we wrap up for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can find out more about your work and the work of your co-author, where they can find the book, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Great. Uh, So the book itself is coming out in June uh, through Emerald Publishing. You can get it from Emerald's site. You can get it on Amazon. So wherever books are sold online, you can probably find a copy. It's up for pre-order already. Uh, Both Cy and I are involved a lot on Twitter uh, and LinkedIn. And so feel free to add either of us there. Um, And I'm also, I do a lot of stuff on uh, ResearchGate as well. So a lot of my research is available through ResearchGate um, because again, it's important to get our knowledge out there in the world help to make sure that it informs practice. Um, And so, yeah, feel free to add us on LinkedIn, feel free to follow us on Twitter um, and certainly take a look at, you know, the Amazon page or Emerald's page related to the book. You know, we're happy to talk to anyone related to it as well uh, on this topic area. Um, You know, I think with the book uh, and with pop culture being used in leadership in general, Um, I just think it's a good way to make these ideas accessible and engaging. And so I do encourage people to think about that in their own practice uh, is to use these types of examples, use these things. Cause I think sometimes we can just get into that, share a leadership quote or talk about a CEO um, when oftentimes in films, we have a lot more of an engaging way to say, Oh, this is a good example of servant leadership or, Oh, this is a situation where conflict has cause problems or has been been helpful. Um, and so I see this as a part of our overall way of reaching out to the field and helping people to understand these topics, which I think is crucial because leadership has such a big impact on our world. Well said, Gordon. It has been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about Gordon and his research, check out the book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, 
the journey of becoming a truly remarkable leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue, what some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There is no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of your problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. alchemy of truly remarkable leadership, ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.